So to conclude this video, I just want to show a quick little shape I've been working on kind of as a test study. I'm always searching for, you know, the perfect shape to use to introduce new users to box cutter and hard ops. And so this is just one of those shapes. You know, sometimes I'll get up in the morning and just goof off with the idea of, you know, just messing with the shape um, and seeing where it goes. So the key thing about this particular shape is grabbing this particular bevel and just rounding it out using bevel, which just feels very nice. And then, you know, grabbing this piece, breaking that with a bevel, breaking that one with a bevel. And we could also take this and SX scale it. And from here we can get to work. So one of my favorite tools in hard ops to mess with occasionally is selection of boolean. It's also located under ST mesh tools, but it's also located under boolean. You can just choose selection of boolean. This will allow you to inset and then from there click to perform the extrude. And now we've performed an extrusion to mesh. In fact, in, in the back of my head, I'm pondering why it jumped into edit mode. I'll be checking into that later. I mean, anytime I'm testing these tools, I'm always pondering what the next level is and what further tasks need to be done for it. So now I'm actually using end gun in line mode in order to perform a series of cuts just across, you know, nothing major. And of course we want to alt text mirror this to the other side using a modifier. In the event that you bring up mirror and it's not normal, you can just press X and it'll reset mirror to default setting. So I always bring up mirror, just use the default settings and I'm good to go. However, before we continue, we want to um, probably add a little bit more to this. So I'm just going to control B bevel these. Even though beveling it put a sharp edge on both sides of it, I can just control shift click sharpen to perform a resharp and that will actually solve that particular issue. So let's just alt click sharpen and we're ready to continue on to the next level. So at this point, I like to perform a slice on the side and begin experimenting with my wedges. I mean, in this case, we can't get it to conform all the way to the surface, all the way across this because we beveled it, but it's fine for me to uh, shift to live and just kind of eyeball this particular wedge. As long as the wedge isn't too big, it shouldn't look too inaccurate. And we just want to continue on. Same thing here. Just looking at it from the side, we could rotate it, but I see that my rotation axis is off. So instead of dealing with that, we'll just shift it to live. So shift to live is like my favorite fallback. I refer to it as the fallback of fallbacks. Another thing I also like to try with these boxes now is I'll draw a shape similar to what you're seeing and I'll use a um, knife to try to knife it. And then by exiting box cutter, I can uh, select this face, control click all the way to here. We could extrude it straight up and then press SX zero. And we will actually, well, let's not use that. Let's just not. I just had memories of a previous session where it actually merged too much geometry, giving me an oblong shape. So we'll actually just bring it into meat like so D dissolving one edge because I know there's a double there, but these two aren't worth being merged. And I'm pretty sure auto merge would actually finish the job. So because of the way that this shape's made, we can actually grab this edge and bevel it. And everything of course is connected. So everything's above board there. And this is really what our shape is so far. So. And this is actually the beginning of the exercise. Like now that you've made this shape, you can now begin experimenting with the different types of detail you would add. So for me, I would of course perform a cut here, give it a very thin bevel of few segments. So that way it fits this area. I'm all grabbing this draw dot in order to keep the proportions. So now that we have that, we can of course follow that piece with another good piece. I wanted to end this video with a demo. I haven't done a demo in the last couple of videos. And you know, it's always a fun time. And we see that we're now beginning to compromise our surface a little bit. So for that, I'll actually tab into edit mode and just mitigate it to be to a more central area. And we could even take drastic measures like you see me doing here where I'm putting an edge loop all the way across and then connecting them with J using a lightning bolt as you see here, GX, bring a point here, select both of these J grab both of these GX in order to bring them in and we've kind of mitigated this area. So my goal with modeling is always to try to mitigate shading as it happens to just try to get to the end goal. But now that we have this, we can actually begin really having fun. So I'm alt scrolling back to end gone line. And I just, for some reason it wasn't looking completely head on. I was off there, but now that we have end gone line, we can just begin drawing. And of course, after we set our last point, we want to press T and lower the thickness because 
having such thick end gone lines is going to not work out for us. But now that we have this, we can just begin just cutting panels into it. And this is one of the funner parts of this exercise. Just notice how at the beginning I'm selecting in between. So basically I'm activating view align because you can see the word view is in red, meaning that because of my first click, the selection was overridden because there was no surface underneath instead it located view. So I'm basically starting in between to activate view as like a sort of hack where I can then go through and get these lines. And it's not even a hack. It's just all the systems working the way they're supposed to. In fact, you know, I'm, I'm so obsessed with everything working the way it's supposed to that, you know, sometimes issues with just a single OS like Mac will kind of pause our plans going forward on everything until it's rectified. So while I, you know, don't care about Mac and, and the way that I describe it, I do actually care that our product performs in it the way it's supposed to because Mac people want a Mac, and Mac people also want an infinite grid. Um, you know, I told so many people who wrote me with Mac issues that they should use static grid, and they're like, no, I want to use um, infinite because I love infinite. It's like, huh, all right, well, that is good to know. It's good to know that people love infinite, especially in the face of a new grid being presented in front of them. And that sort of loyalty just lets us know to, um, you know, continue putting our efforts into making these things work the way as functionally intended because there are people who like one particular feature over the other. So now that we've paneled this out real quick, we could do all sorts of stuff. I could um, use Everscroll and we could actually just bring everything back while pressing A. And, you know, someday we might have to bring in like a filtration system for what cutters we could bring back. You know, anytime I experience something that's like a bunch of clicks, all I could think about is how it could be automated to be improved. But I'll spare you guys that. So I'm just going to jump to collection two, select this, have an active selection, and we could press Q and solidify and adjust the solidify of everything at the same time. If we wanted just to make it even thinner, which is what I'm wanting to do in my case. And we also can continue putting loops in between. And let's just make these continuous as well, because you know the, the point that it needs to connect to is so close. So why not help it make its connection? So now here we are looking at this particular slut shape. And usually I'll just continue jumping back and forth as far as modifying things on this, adding cuts, lowering the auto smooth until I get to that desired final result. And there's all sorts of little fun deviations I see that can be done in this particular exercise. Like wedge is just one of those uh, edge detailers. You know, a, an edge can be so boring, but with wedge, you can just uh, quickly have a break in the surface that you can come back and grab later and bevel to, you know, really make look exquisite. Uh, another trick that I really love with Wedge that I didn't get the chance to showcase is right here. So let's select this and we are just, or let's select this and let's see how much meat we got in here. We got a little bit of meat and let's just press W to Wedge and we'll just wedge it just right like so. And from here we can now draw a box on top cut straight down, press B to bevel, round it out, and there we go. So these little numbers right here are just um, some of the shapes I've been playing with lately, just seeing how far I can get with them. I'll pause this circle, grab it, reverse bevel the top face using hard ops, just real fast to just level that out. But these shapes are always fun to try to fit in places. Another thing with Wedge is um, Wedge has really helped me connect with Intersect. Intersect is probably our least used Boolean operation inside of Hard Ops, but inside of Box Cutter is definitely getting some play. So here I am uh, performing a wedge on this particular area. However, we see that this isn't going to work out. So first thing I'm gonna do is trim it down to size. Next thing I'm gonna do is jump over to Ngon and we're gonna click in between space and time to begin drawing our Ngon. And we'll just bring that across and we'll press XX to change it over to intersect. And by pressing spacebar, we've now limited it, limited it, the wedge to this particular area. And we can even bring back our cutter with ever scroll and just move it ever so slightly to ensure that we're actually wedging this uh, in an adequate fashion. In fact, I may even want to raise it up a little bit just to 
make sure that it transitions with the surface right. And just like that, we were able to use wedge to our advantage. So, you know, most of the time I'm actually still using wedge in its default state, this one. But there are some cases where having your factor at 0.5 could be beneficial to you. So here I am drawing my wedge and I'm basically able to double wedge these connecting pieces at the same time, which is just one of those things that I never thought of until recently, but it's like, wow, double wedging, it is the bee's knees. So I'm hoping that users are able to enjoy this sort of stuff. Of course, anytime you want to disable the states on your shapes, you can just do that through this panel. So, you know, you're never locked into anything. You can even toggle this stuff off during the tool. You know, if you think like me, um, or if you think about it in terms of how I would want it, you know, I want that flexibility of being able to make a decision, to change the decision, to reverse the decision, even in the middle of the tool. There's still some things that I was actually wanting to uh, bring to this update, like the ability to roll modifiers up the stack in box cutter and also things like that. But we'll have to uh, save that for next time. But there's always more to be done to uh, further refine this. I mean, there's still systems that need to be added to connect with geometry nodes and things like that. So our work is cut out for us. But just like that, we're able to create this quick shape and I was able to do it in less than 12 minutes. In fact, if I wanted to continue taking this on to the next level, another trick that I like is shift clicking smart apply, which will smart apply a duplicate and select it. So I'll just sharpen that in order to mark all the edges. And we'll jump into face mode and because I have face selection um, or because I'm marking with seams, I can just isolate my faces and we'll just use this piece and press I and test my patience. Let's just uh, control I and delete everything else. And by test my patience, I mean just letting that loop live. I was looking at it and thinking that's not going to inset right. And sure enough, it did not It was a disappointment. So let's just delete that loop. And here we are looking at it and we can dissolve that as well because that's also gonna be problematic. And let's just take this, solidify it, but press two to push it out both directions and we can just perform a difference. And now we're adding transitions in here to the various surfaces and we can do that to a bigger piece like this piece here. It's also worth just shift clicking uh, smart apply to get a clone and then marking it as hard as possible and we see that some edges are being missed here. All right, that looks about correct. So let's just press I, we'll inset it ever so slightly to the limit, press Control I, delete all the rest of the geometry as fast as possible before you get confused on what's going on here. And let's just select this edge, dissolve it because that wasn't gonna work out. And if it happened on that side, it's gonna happen on the other side but it looks like it's fine. So let's just double check, take a quick perimeter scan and we'll press Q, go under modifier, solidify, give it quite a bit of thickness, maybe not so much thickness if we can see overlap, but you know, let's keep things within the limits. And there we are performing a difference, uh, difference balloon with that. So we could press D, switch back over to box cutter and notice that I jump from wedge box to box just by selecting box in a menu. I love that. It's the small things that I love the most. You know, it's all behavioral to me. And let's actually begin drawing on this side. And we'll just bring that across and we could draw a box. We'll just perform a box extrusion, but we'll press W to make it a wedge. And now that it's a wedge, we can just work it you know, work it just a little bit. Just put a little tick in here, put a little tick there, put a little tick everywhere. Like I'm determined to perform 20,000 wedges and find out where wedge is truly, truly supposed to go. I feel that there are just areas that are untapped that could be wedged that are yet to be discovered. So I am on that quest. So now we basically have our sled complete. However, I also like to get a little weird with it. And by weird, I mean, I will draw a little box. We'll turn off snapping and we will just control double click, control double click and repeat is so good now. You know, the complaints that I have left for it are minimal, which means that we get to go back to the process of taking repeat forward. But repeat has had such a long road and I'm eternally proud of the work that Proxy and Loof have put into all these versions of Box Cutter because, 
you know, every single fix registers to me. It completely changes my experience, making things even smoother and faster. And the further we go, the more minor these changes will be as far as systems changing and user interface and muscle memory being adjusted and it'll all just be systematic. And I feel like that's a good place to be. I mean, of course we want to try allowing users to be able to adjust the tool however they want to whatever level they want, but first we got to get those systems in place where they're predictable, reliable, and also stable. So while things are a little crazy in this Blender 3.0 right now, I am a bit of a um, sadist when it comes to Blender. I'll use Blender even if it was crashing on a five minute timer, I would just work within the bounds that I'm given. But as you see in this video, I was able to get pretty far using Blender 3.0 without any sort of crashes. So, you know, it always will make a fool of me, Blender, I mean. If there's some sort of issue that I'm counting on to happen, you know, it might not happen. It might just surprise you by remaining stable. But there are still some um, random crashes that will occur. So if you're using 3 3.0 I definitely recommend also keeping a LTS handy just in case because you know there are some issues that were coming up I think I'm already experiencing some files that I can no longer open in this version uh, just minor things but you know I always roll with the punches because I feel like using the uh, most up-to-date version of Blender shows me uh, possible future issues that could happen with customers and that's something that I care about so now I want to orient a box to this this is where our buddy shift V and changing to nearest edge using our orientation comes in handy. I am speechless when it comes to talking about orientation. Now that the uh, quest has been fulfilled, we are now seeing just things the way that they're supposed to be as far as uh, behavior. You know, previously we had dots that weren't adhering to our behavior panel. We had grids that were not adhering and slowly bunny by bunny, we have leveled it up to the point that we're now ready to take on ogres. So I just cannot express enough gratitude for Loof and Proxy for their tireless work and also AR. Uh, there are some things that we have cooking in the background that will probably not be coming out for a while, but definitely will be pretty impressive when they are. Um, you know, we're always thinking of what's the next shape for box cutter, what's the next step to take forward. And brought to you by Power Save, I'm going to go ahead and save this as QBox and we see that I'm now on QBox number 427 of the QBox line powered by power save but with that um, I'll wrap up this video I'm getting uh, reflective but all in all just wanted to ensure and show you guys that the uh, latest update is out and it's fine and just wanted to show a little bit of an action and with that I will wrap up this video thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time